The 6.8 Western and the 6.8 SPC. Two rounds that are very different and use very different firearms, but Dave and I are going to talk about them right now. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than ammo.com. Chris, we often compare incomparable cartridges on this podcast, yep. and uh, today we're going to talk about two rounds whose only thing in common I can think of is the number they share in their name. Dave, you're absolutely right. Uh, and if you need any ammo, guys, make sure you click that link down in the description or the pinned comment. Get your free $20 off here at ammo.com. But Dave, you're absolutely right. The 6.8 SPC and 6.8 Western were made for two completely different intended purposes. Now, of course, the 6.8 SPC is, uh, you know, mostly chambered in the AR-15, whereas the 6.8 Western, a rather newcomer to the shooting world, is pretty much only a bolt-action cartridge. Now, Chris, I might just be huffing gas here, but it's my understanding that the 6.8 SPC is kind of meant to bridge the gap between the 5.56 and the uh, and the 308, whereas the 6.8 Western is, is a, a true long-distance hunting cartridge. Dave, that's a great way to describe it. Honestly, I couldn't have said it much better myself. And uh, the 6.8 really increases that kinetic energy that the AR-15 can deliver without having to upgrade to an AR-10 like you would if you wanted to switch to a 308. Now, the 6.8 Western, absolutely right, a true long-range hunting cartridge, but also in a short action. It has about the same ballistics as a 7mm rem mag, but you don't have that magnum action that you have to contend with. Now Chris, I would imagine the perceived lack of kinetic energy of the 5.56 probably came up during the war in Somalia and the same need that bred the 458 SOTCOM. Also, there were lots of reports about the 5.56 just not being enough to put down threats uh, and requiring multiple shots, and sometimes even multiple shots didn't do it. So we had this genesis of cartridges that stemmed from that conflict to really increase the power of the AR-15, and the, the 6.8 SPC, rather, is one of those cartridges that came from that. Yeah, the 6.8 special purpose cartridge. If we're looking at, at broad stroke differences here, right off the bat, one of these rounds is not an AR-15 cartridge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's a great way to put it. Yeah, the 6.8 Western is definitely not an AR-15 cartridge, that's for sure. And actually, you can only get it from two manufacturers, those being Browning and Winchester. So, you know, with the 6.8 SPC, you pretty much any AR-15 on the market can be a host for this cartridge, whereas a 6.8 Western, you really are kind of locked into those two manufacturers if you want a rifle. Which, which can backfire against them. It really can, and that's one thing I think that's held back the wider spread acceptance of the 6.8 Western is there really aren't all that many ammo manufacturers out for it. It's pretty much just browning ammunition is all that you're going to find. But it really packs a lot of punch in a pretty small package. It has a ridiculously long effective range on it, considerably further than the 6.8 SPC. But of course, we're looking at two different cartridges that have two different ideas behind them. Of course, the 6.8 SPC looking for more like CQB applications. So close quarters battle, you know, knocking down doors. Whereas the 6.8 Western, you're, we're talking like four, five, six hundred yard shots on, uh, you know, elk and deer. So it sounds like the 6.8 SPC wasn't really developed to, to give our troops a longer effective range. It was just to give them better stopping power. The 6.8 SPC is made to really kind of give you that extra kinetic energy that you need to really put the threat down. Where the 5.56 can sometimes be a little lacking in that area. Dave, there's one thing I want to touch on here with the 6.8 SPC. It's the difference between the version 1 and the version 2. What's the 6.8 SPC 2? What's that all about? Well, in traditional Remington fashion, sadly, they kind of rushed the launch of the cartridge. And so they kind of rushed out the first rifles and the chamber design wasn't exactly the way it was supposed to be. There were a little bit of pressure issues where we kind of got close to that 55,000 PSI threshold. So 
What did Remington do? Instead of fixing the chamber, they just decided to underload the ammunition, which uh, really kind of hamstrung the 6.8 SBC. It didn't meet the ballistic criteria that the military were looking for, and they just kind of said, okay, well, nice try, but we're not going to take this. Later on, of course, Remington remedied the issue and released the 6.8 SBC too because Sammy, the governing body over cartridges, basically said, well, no, we're not going to certify this cartridge because it's you know, over pressure, basically what you said. The problem is that there are so many original chambers out there that a lot of manufacturers will basically underload all of their 6.8 SBC ammo to make sure that there's never a pressure issue on one of those older rifles. But the same problem with it always pops up. It's that ammo just isn't relatively as available as America's tried and true and beloved 5.56 slash 223. Uh, it really isn't around you see lining the, the shelves at gun stores yet. Yeah, which I think that the broad stroke takeaway is if you're just getting your first AR-15, don't get it at 6.8 SPC. I think that's a pretty good recommendation and definitely what I would say too for anybody looking to get their first AR and get out to the range and start shooting, 5.56 is definitely the way to go. Uh, and honestly, if you're looking for a bolt action rifle, 6.8 Western might be something that's difficult to justify as your first rifle because, again, you're going to have a hard time finding ammo for it. Yeah, and the ammo you can find uh, is going to be really high-quality, long-range hunting ammo, basically. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And we often make another warning on this podcast. It's that super long-range accuracy is a marvelous thing in theory. And if you, if you can use the 6.8 Western to its full potential, God bless you. Dave, you're right. If you love, like, let me see here, it's your Winchester XPR and the Browning x are the two rifles available for it. So if you have one in 6.8 Western uh, and, you know, you really love it, you enjoy shooting it, then, you know, you're definitely going to want to get out to the range, do a little bit more practice and kind of build those skills up if you're planning on doing some long range hunting, because the last thing you want to be doing is taking one of those long range shots the first time you're out in the bush, uh, because you want to make sure you're taking an ethical shot and you can hit what you're aiming at. If you look at the trajectory of these two, let me see, let me pull it up here, uh, at about 400 yards, which is a fairly respectable shot. I think that I could maybe pull off if I worked on it a little bit. Uh, a 6 6.8 Western has only dropped 24 inches, only two feet at 400 yards, where the 6.8 SPC uh, about 40 inches at 400 yards, so considerably more. And a really nice flat trajectory, beautiful for hunting, but you definitely need to be able to understand how to range, how to adjust for wind uh, and drift and things like that, and be able to take those shots uh, if you were gonna take them. With all those short range shots that you have in heavily wooded areas like we have here in Indiana where I live, the 6.8 SPC really does a good job. It has that short range, high kinetic energy value that you would need to take a deer out to about 200 yards. And honestly, that's all that I would need. I wouldn't be able to really, like you said, milk a 6.8 Western to all its potential. So take into account where you're going to be doing your hunting or your shooting, and that will kind of give you more of a clue as to which cartridge is going to work best for you. See, this is where the 6.8 SBC really shines, is something like a home defense situation, having yourself a nice little, you know, 16 inch carbine, or maybe even getting something a little smaller and having it an AR pistol variety would be a great little home defense weapon with a lot of power behind it, even more so than a 5.56. And combine that with some expanding bullets and you've got a pretty potent self-defense weapon there. Whereas the 6.8 Western, I mean, it, it's gonna go through the bad guy and into five houses down the road. Now I may be exaggerating a little bit there, but really a large potential for over penetration with the 6.8 Western in a home defense situation. So David, what are your final thoughts here on the 6.8 Western and 6.8 SBC? What's your pick? These are two rounds I'm kind of apprehensive about advising for different reasons. I mean, the 6.8 SPC is an AR-15 cartridge. That means you're gonna wanna do high volume shooting because the AR-15 uh, is fun. It's fun to use. And, and that, that lack of reliable access to commercially loaded ammunition is, is always gonna give me hesitation. So if you, uh, if you, if you wanna try something new outside of the 5.56, go for it. Just be, just be cautious that you're gonna have trouble finding rounds. On the other end of things, I think over 99% of Americans are, are gonna have zero use for a 6.8 Western. It's, it's, it's just solely 
the long distance hunting round. And to that point, there's a lot of great alternatives that you're going to find a much easier time finding ammo for. Dave, that's a great way to summarize it. I mean, for me personally, in my personal situation, 6.8 SPC is going to be my choice. Uh, just because the 277 bullet right now is really in an interesting place. Of course, uh, with the military's adoption of the 277 Fury, we may start seeing more 277 bullets hit the market, and we may see more of a resurgence in this caliber. And so I think the 6.8 SPC is really in a good place as far as that's concerned. But like you said, ammo availability is an issue. You. And honestly, for a, if you want an AR-15, definitely get the 5.56 version to start with. If you want something that's got a little more oomph to it and you reload, having a 6.8 SBC is a great way to increase that kinetic energy potential and uh, you know maintain the AR-15 platform as opposed to having to upgrade to an AR-10. 6.8 Western, I honestly, myself personally, I can't see myself buying one anytime soon solely for the fact that there's just a lot of questions around the cartridge right now, whether it's going to make it or not. It's an mm -hmm. amazing cartridge. There's no denying that. It's got a great trajectory, great kinetic energy, and it really has that long-range potential that hunters out west really want to have in a short action, which is really, really nice. But it's the fact that there's only like you can only get ammo from browning it's kind of a bit of an issue for me and i'm really worried about whether it's going to take off or not so i would give a little bit of caution to a 68 western but if you hand load you should be just fine with that i want to make sure you make sure you click that like and subscribe button down below click on the link to get your 20 dollars off at ammo.com and we will see you out on the range